Welcome to the Roar Rocket instructional video on how to use your thinner press for marquetry. The thinner press is ideally suited for laminating veneers to substrates such as MDF, plywood, masonite, or even Baltic birch. Marquetry is the art of inlaying different woods in the form of veneers and other natural materials to create pictures. Inlaying is to cut or saw two or more materials like veneer so that they recess together. So let's have a look at some simple marquetry techniques before we press a project. Here we see Barb cutting some pre-cut lengths of veneer. The pieces are being cut into diamond shapes that will eventually be glued together to make a beautiful box-like pattern. Have a close look at the jig she has built, a flat piece of plywood with a fence at one end. She has two sets of blocks that she can put up against the fence and by putting a ruler on the other side she can very accurately cut very precise strips of wood at the same distance one after another. Here we see how she laid out her strips to get a perfect 60 degree angle using a 3060 plastic rule. Here you can see her gluing the triangle pieces together using a dab of white glue on each piece. Very little glue is needed for this step as you are applying only a tiny amount on each edge. Here is a work in progress that will give you an idea of what the finished pattern will look like. Here's the piece of work that Barbara has selected for vacuum pressing. In order to prepare it for pressing, it needs to be cut down to size. Barbara first lays her veneer down onto the cutting table, then takes her substrate material, in this case half inch MDF, and lays it on top of the veneer. Once this is accomplished, she takes a pencil and marks a line all the way around the four sides. Then using transparent cellophane tape, she cuts and lays strips of tape over top of the lines that she marked with her pencil. Once accomplished, she repeats the same process of marking her lines and laying down the tape on the other side. It is important during this step to make sure the lines on either side of the veneer are properly aligned. The final step in trimming your veneer is to take a ruler, a sharp utility knife, and accurately cut along your drawn line on all four sides of the veneer. This may take more than one pass with the knife depending upon the thickness of the veneer. Be careful not to cut inside the line. The cellophane tape that we laid down will help prevent the veneer from ripping as you cut it with the knife.
Once you've accurately cut the four sides of the veneer, it's time to peel the tape. Make sure there is no excess pieces of tape remaining on either side of the veneer. Make sure that you have no more than 1 8 inch of overhang between the veneer and the substrate. The next step is to cut a piece of wax paper a little bit larger than what the veneer slice is. Once you have cut this and laid it on top of the veneer, it's now time to cut 5 or 6 pieces of paper towel or newspaper and lay them over top of the wax paper. Now it's time to have a look at the Roar Rocket Thin Air Press System. Open up the package and take out the components. You will have a vacuum pump, a thinner press vacuum bag, breather netting, and extra sealing tape. Lay all of the components of the kit out on the table within easy reach. I recommend cutting the breather netting to the same size as what the veneer sheet is. Breather netting will ensure even evacuation of air from the vacuum bag. Barbara will use two rollers for gluing her project. One is for applying the glue, and the other is for rolling the veneer down firmly against the glue to the substrate. Here you can see Barbara applying the glue. Using the roller, she rolls the glue until it is one even thickness over the entire surface of the veneer. Too much glue will cause the glue to bleed through the veneer. It's a fine balance as too little glue will prevent the veneer from sticking to the substrate properly. You may have to repeat this a couple of times in order to get the proper thickness and consistency of glue on your veneer. Now Barbara places the veneer on top of the MDF. Using a roller, she forces the veneer tightly against the MDF. This will help hold the veneer in place while we prepare the thin air press. Now Barbara lays the wax paper, the sheets of paper towel, and a pre-prepared platen with breather netting on top of her veneer sheet and MDF substrate. Now it's time to place your project into the thin air press. An extra set of hands is always helpful during this stage. Try to position your project centered with the one-way valve, making sure that the breather netting is between the valve and your project. Carefully peel the protective tape from the sealing tape at the open end of the tap bag. Remember to save the protective tape as it can be reused and protects the sealing tape from getting particles of glue on it when removing your project. Lay the vinyl down on top of the sealing tape, then using your fingers gently knead the vinyl against the tape. Try pressing the sealing tape from the inside of the bag towards the outside of the bag. This will prevent air pockets from forming along the tape. Now it's time to use the hand pump. Place the hand pump on top of the one-way valve, holding the base of the pump tightly against the valve. With the other hand, start pumping. It will take less than a minute to evacuate all of the air from the tap bag. Already you can see the vinyl forcing itself against your project. The pump will feel harder to pull as you pump the air from the tap bag. Once the vinyl has been forced tightly around your project, an extra 10 or 15 pumps will ensure that your project has achieved maximum vacuum. Try pulling the vinyl away from your project. If you have pumped enough air out, you will find it difficult to pull the vinyl away from the project. If air seems to be leaking back into the bag, recheck your sealing tape because this is usually the cause of any air leakage. 
A project this size now has about 1,400 pounds of pressure exerted on it by the Earth's atmospheric pressure. Now it's time for the glue to dry. I usually wait eight hours. During this period, check frequently to see that your bag is not leaking any air. Usually I check it within the first five minutes and then after the first half hour. Once you've established that there is no air leakage, you can leave it for the remainder of the eight hours or until your glue has dried. Before opening your tap bag, allow the air back into the bag by pinching the nozzle. Once done, carefully peel open the sealing tape and replace the paper protective covering before removing your project. Once your project has been removed, remember to carefully fold the bag and replace it back in the thin air press kit box. This will help keep the bag clean for your next pressing. Here's a picture of Barbara's finished project firmly attached to the MDF. It's a small job now to trim the excess material, sand, and finish the project. I'd like to thank Barbara Brown for her beautiful marquetry and Tom Cherry for the music he provided for this video. I hope that our Rocket Thin Air Press system will play a part in your next marquetry project.